So we're going to do a deck tech for Legacy Eldrazi, my Wastelandless version. Um, it's got a nice spread of things. So we play 24 lands, 4 Ancient Tombs, 2 Caracas, 2 Eye of Ugin, 4 Cloud Post, 3 Glimmer Post, 3 Cavern of Souls, 4 Eldrazi Temples, and 2 Corrupted Crossroads. Um, I'll get into more of this a little bit later. So our X's are seven, uh, 3 Endless Ones and 4 Chalice of the Voids in the main. Um, Endless One's really cool. I like only having three of them because he just dies to everything. He can be a huge mana sink for you late in the game and then just turn around and just get crushed. Um, so I do think three is good. He also dies to, like, Flicker Wisp, which is a problem. Um, EE on zero or, you know, all those fun things. Abrupt Decay kills him. So, to our two drops, we have four Warping Wells in the main. This card is extremely good. Um, just so many modes that are versatile. The Even the third mode I've used to ramp myself ahead, like if I'm like, oh, I need to make sure I get to my Reality Smash next turn. Okay, boom, I can do it. And then I can even cast through a, uh, through a, uh, like a daze or something. Um, four Mimics. This guy just, uh, is the aggros. Uh, one Umazaw was Jit. And one Spatial Contortion. This card is for things such as Dia Heretic Aethor, or a Flip Delver. Um, a small Goyf I've killed with this. Uh, it's useful. It can be killed. Um, you can get a... Um, it hits Death and Taxes a lot. Sometimes it'll hit other decks um, because they'll have like a 2-2. Two -two or a 2-3 or whatever, and you can get you can get those off the board pretty easily. So uh, there's only one in the main and one in the side. It's something I want to be a 4 of, but it does give me one extra kill spell in the main. Three drops, we have two Eldrazi Displacers. This guy is bonkers good. Um, flickering tokens, flickering delvers, flickering uh, infect creatures after pumps go on, or in the middle of pumps is really good. Um, flipping your opponents. Attackers, so they don't get to attack or block. You also can flick Thought Not Seer in and out um, during their draw step to act like Vendillion Click just a little bit better, because they don't draw blind. You, don't, you get to work with perfect knowledge the entire time. Um, and depending on what you're up against, there is a chance they can't cast any spells while you're doing that. Three Mattery Shapers. Uh, he's low in the aggression, especially for his curve. I mean, he's three. If he was a 3-3 three, three for three, I'd probably play four of them. Um, but the 3-2 is, is good. Uh, he does usually generate more card advantage. And then we have ways to recur him, which is nice. Um, he just gets thrown under the bus all the time. That's his job. One sort of fire nice. I deviated away from the jits only. Uh, and I am playing a sort of fire and ice and a, um, a sort of light and shadow. This gives me a lot of versatility and they each have effects that I want. I have a lot of um, incidental life gain that keeps me in a lot of games, and with Eldrazi, sometimes you just need one more turn to overrun somebody. Um, so th those types of cards give that type of opportunity to me. So, um, the Sword of Fire Nice is card advantage, plus it lets me get through some blockers and stupid stuff like True Name Nemesis. Um, my stuff can't be bounced and stuff like that. Uh, Sword of Light and Shadow protects against Swords to Plowshares, which is uh, somewhat of an issue. Um, also lets me beat through a lot of white and black. There's a lot of white and black creatures in the format. Um, the life gain is nothing to sneeze out, and I can also recur things that they've killed off, or maybe discard, um, which is really nice. And then I do run one Eldrazi Obligator in the main. I'm looking to bump one up to the sideboard as well. I just need to figure out what I'm going to put in for it, or take out for it. Uh, this card has been really good every time I've seen it. Um, when I've cast it, I've won that game. So I've tutored him up, I've stolen uh, Primeval Titans with it, um, I've stolen Thought Not Seers with it to take a swing back for lethal, um, I can steal other Reality Smashers, or Emrakul, or, you know, whatever else. He has a lot of, he has a very high ceiling and not a very low floor, because you're always going to get another creature off of their side. You're going to push through additional damage, which is nice. <laughs> Um, four drops. I have four Thought Knots here, which is the standard. I really don't need to explain that guy. I, I run one Divineral's Disc in the main. Um, this is another oddball choice. Uh, I did this in Columbus, day two with this type of build. Um, 
from that build to this build, there's been a few changes, such as Caracas and Eldrazi Displacer, the Obligator and the World Breaker, which I get to, and the Spatial Contortion. There was uh, Venerals Disc, there was O-Stone, um, ran some other stuff here and there. A Metamorph was in the list. Uh, wastelands were in the list, and again, this is a Wastelandless version. Um, I'm trying that out because I really don't think the Wastelands are needed for this build. Um, and I haven't, through reviewing all of my older videos, uh, up until this point, plus the testing that I've done, I've never found Wasteland to really swing a game one way or another. Um, there have been, I shouldn't say really, I mean, it, it has happened like once or twice. It happened when I was playing this in paper uh, a couple months back, and he played a Glacial Chasm to protect himself. He's playing post, and I was able to Wasteland it and swing for the lethal. Um, but those those times are very few and far between for how useful it's been for me. Um, Displacer is really, really powerful. Obligator's been really powerful. Worldbreaker's been very powerful. <laughs> um, so, Nevidoral's disc, the logic behind this is, yes, it comes into play tapped, but it is only four mana, which is not hard for me to generate. It's really easy for me to activate through a Blood Moon or through a Back to Basics, um, which is extremely nice. Um, it takes away things like those cards I just named, plus Moat, Plus Ensnaring Bridge. These are all really hard things for Eldrazi to deal with. We don't have many answers for them. Um, Disc is... It's not the best. Because it doesn't get rid of Planeswalkers and stuff like that. But it gives me a utility for one mana to go through and wipe the entire board. And it's... I can play into it. You know, I, I can make sure that I'm going to benefit from it. I can hold back Reality Smashers and swing through for Lethal after that. Uh, which I have done. Um, it catches people off guard as well. They don't really... They go wide and they're expecting, you oh, know, I'm, I'm wider than Eldrazi. They're not going to do anything about this. And I have to go over the top. Well, the disc lets me play that and then they have they have a turn to kill me. Um, it gives them one free turn, basically. Um, this card has been fantastic, though. Four Reality Smashers of the Norm. Another oddball choice is one Steel Hellkite. I was running one of these in the side and it lost its place for... A little bit more of a controlly aspect. Um, this card is insane. Uh, I've won numerous games, both online and in paper, with this card because people can't deal with it. Um, you can pump it when it first comes into play to pump your mimics. You can blow up a huge thing. I was playing, uh, for, exa for example, uh, in paper, I was playing against Eldrazi. I landed a Steel Hellkite. And on the board for my opponent was two thought not seers so i was able to swing through he couldn't block i paid four took eight power off the board from him and drew two cards really really strong um i let a couple little chump guys get in the way of those two i'm not really that worried about it but th this guy is legit um, i'm very surprised to not see more play with him and i kind of took this idea from mud uh he, he's just he's very very solid and i can still tutor him up, tutor him up with uh the um ivugan Worldbreaker is the final card on the main board. Uh, he's a clean answer to a lot of those problematic cards I named earlier. Uh, I can't get him through Blood Moon. Back to base is going to be tough, but he takes out an Ensnaring Bridge. He takes out a Moat. He takes out um, a wide variety of, of issues. He takes out a land that I need to go away if, if that's really where I'm going to be. He can take a sword. He can take a, you know, equipment. Um, he, he's been very good. He's also 5'7", which is solid. He can block. Uh, Bigger creatures, beneficially. And he has Reach, um, which is also nothing to sneeze at. Um, the other card that I've dropped out of this deck is Endbringer. I really don't think it's that good. Um, he's restricted on his uses. You can only use him once a turn. You can't use him the turn that he comes into play. He doesn't have an impact on the game when he comes into play. Uh, the... the Diversity that I have with the Eldrazi Displays with the Obligator, the Worldbreaker, really make up and give me a, a well-rounded answer that I can tutor for with the Ivoog. And even though I only played two of those, um, because three I felt was too many, I was seeing too many in my hand, and um, people weren't killing them, they were killing everything else, so I was holding Ivoogans, uh, which is an issue. Because it, it's not something I can just, oh, tap it, generate mana off of it, play another one, and then generate more mana. It doesn't work that way, so... Uh, to the sideboard, um, I have two Pithing Needles. This is just a really good catch-all to a lot of problems for Eldrazi. Um, 
can name equipments, I can name planeswalkers, uh, I can name wasteland, which doesn't hurt me anymore. It's really solid. Uh, two surgical extractions. I wanted more turn zero or possibility of turn zero interaction with black red reanimator on the rise. Um, this also is good against dredge. It can take away a grave troll or um, some other stuff. It's not bad against other decks. I have brought it in more aggressively against um, against things because I needed to take. There were just dead cards, so surgical extraction came in and I was able to take away options they might have later down the road. Uh, I bring it against Storm and stuff like that. Um, so, one Spatial Contortion, for the same reason I named the first one in the main, it gives me another kill spell. Two Sphere of Resistances, I usually go way bigger than my opponent uh, on mana, so, especially with the Cloud Post, the Sphere doesn't hurt me that much. Um, I have been uh, locked out by my own Sphere due to Wastelands, um, multiple Wastelands, which was a problem, and didn't hit on the land drop, so I got mana screwed, which sucked. One Ratchet Bomb. Uh, this is to take care of some of the smaller answers. This is good against Merfolk. This is good against um, Death and Taxes. is a lot of twos. Um, Goblins has a variety. Elves this is really strong against. Um, just your, your decks that go wide uh, that, are, that are lower to the ground. Um, ratchet Bomb's a really strong answer. It doesn't take a whole lot of investment to get there. Um, it's also not bad against Miracles if you know they're on the Entreat the Angels plan. Uh, you can just kind of leave this on the battlefield, and they either have to answer it before they do their angels, or you just take them out. Um, three Fairy Macabs, again, with that turn zero interaction. Um, Reanimator has become way more popular uh, since the Black Red version is so much cheaper to build, and it's very aggressive, and it's resilient. Um, I actually have that in paper as well. Um, it is a very resilient deck. Fairy Macab takes away a lot of... It's, it's a huge answer to that deck. Um, and it also does things against other decks as well. Um, I bring this in against lands. Graveyard Hate is really good against them. Um, that's kind of where I'm at with the Macabs. Five Graveyard Hate seems like a lot, but it's all turn zero. I can, I don't have to spend mana for it, and it takes away um, multiple answers at one time, it, it, or multiple problems at one time. Uh, another disc in the side. Um, this has been Clutch. Uh, I like having two of them sometimes, depending on the matchup. Um, so it's been good. And then, sorry, another oddball choice would be Spine of Ishsaw. So, uh, hard cast this to take care of Blood Moons, um, and Snaring Bridges mode. Same, same type of answer that I said. It's also a really, really my only answer to show and tell. Um, if I show and tell in Reality Smasher and they show and tell in Emrakul, who's going to win? Not me. Um, if I show and tell, if we show and tell at the same time, I can take out Omniscience or uh, Emrakul. As long as I don't have a Trick Bind um, or anything of that nature, then the spine's going to blow up whenever they play. It's just a catch-all for Omni Show slash Show and Tell. Plus, I have hard cast it. Um, it's actually really cool with the Veneral's disc. That's a fun little interaction because I can play it, blow the disc, get it back to my hand, and take out something else of theirs as well. It's slow, and it's very uh, commander-ish and kludgy-ish, um, but it does its job. And I do have one more World Breaker on the side. Um, I'm de th this guy is definitely staying. Um, I am debating dropping a Spine for another Eldrazi Obligator, um, just because he's been so powerful. And he, he has a good answer to... Uh, show and tell as well, unless it's Omni Show and they cast Emrakul and they take an extra turn, that kind of sucks. But this is the list that I'm working with. Um, I've been doing fairly well with it. I, I really don't miss the Wastelands at all. Um, there have been a few times where I'm like, oh, Wasteland would have been nice right here. But at the same point, like, I would have been down to land, they would have been down to land. It's really good against Post. If they don't, you know, you can take away a huge chunk of their mana. But other than that, it's it's not been anything great, and, and post is such a small portion of the format that I'm not that worried about, um, you know, hedging against it so much. Uh, I, I do have my hedges, I do have my, the plays, you know, the sideboard options and things like that, so, um, but this is what I'm running, and, uh, I hope you enjoy the following videos. Um, some of them there was less talking, I've already pre-recorded these before I've recorded this, um, my daughter has been sick, and so she was home, and she was babbling in the background, and 
Uh, so there's points where I turn my mic off, there's points where you'll hear her babbling, so that there are games that are in silence for the most part. Um, and this is... I think there was one match that I probably cut out early of from the recording, because it was just... There was no point in watching anything further. They were done. They beat me in turn or two. Um, I think that was the Enchantress matchup, and it was just horrible. So, this is the list. All right, enjoy.